An Englishman's home isn't just his castle. If Vince Cable gets his way, it'll also be the government's cash cow. A fortnight ahead of the budget, the business secretary floats the idea that everyone with a big house should be taxed on its value. It's the most expensive thing most of us will ever buy. The change would be from being taxed on what you earn to being taxed on what you own. As an idea, is it either desirable or even workable? Our political editor has learned what's happened to another highly contentious government plan. Yes, Jeremy, I've learned that the government's controversial new planning laws are going to go ahead despite hints of a rethink. Greetings, world. We are anonymous. The alleged leader of two of the most famous and prolific hacking groups in the world, Anonymous and Lulsec, is unmasked as an FBI informant. The woman privy to the secrets of the happy hacking movement talks for the first time. And what happens to you when you end up on the wrong side of the Arab Spring? Mark Urban goes to the last place that fell to the Libyan uprising. This was Gaddafi's grandiose vision of a capital for Africa. Now it's been ripped apart. I'll be talking to the people of the dictator's hometown. We're all in this together, but some of us ought to be more in it than others. That's the implication of remarks today from the business secretary, Vince Cable. In one of those, hey, I'm just thinking aloud comments which drive his conservative colleagues up the wall, he mused that maybe there was a case for getting rid of the 50% uh, rate of income tax paid by anyone earning over 150000 a year. And in return, maybe people's wealth ought to be taxed, which is essentially a tax on their houses. Our political editor, Allegra Stratton. The respectable pile, or mansion as Vince Cable would call it, of the composer Hubert Parry nestled in the very expensive Kensington Square. Right next door, another honoured home, that of John Stuart Mill, godfather of liberal political thought. He's the original architect of a wealth tax, which in the hands of his modern-day descendant, and also look-alike, don't you think, has morphed into a mansion tax. Cable says the dream must be realised. A tax on a home worth over £2 million in exchange for dropping the 50p tax, much hated by the Tories. My colleagues are not ideologically wedded to the 50p tax rate. Um, if that were to go, it should be replaced by... Um, taxation of wealth because the wealthy people in the country have got to pay their share. And mansion tax actually is a very economically sensible way of doing it. Lord Newby is a Lib Dem peer, champion of the mansion tax and friend to the business secretary. How important is this to the Lib Dems and what they get from government? Well, it's one of the things we fought the last election on and we're very keen that it should be implemented. We think it's particularly important to do it if the government's contemplating reducing the 50p tax rate. Because we think that in the long run you should do that, but now isn't the time to do it, particularly unless you do something like a mansion tax, which means that people at the really top end of the income and wealth scale are paying their fair share. John Stuart Mill's house is worth just under two million, but if you go next door, his neighbour's house is worth just over, and that's the kind of stark contrast that really worries the Tories. They think that up and down the country, you'll end up with neighbour pitched against neighbour in a battle over the value of their homes. This is, in the words of one cabinet minister, a recipe for a big judicial review. It'll end up bringing in not very much money and a lot of grief. For many Tory MPs, this is a policy they simply won't accept. I'm opposed to a mansion tax. Although it will affect very few people in my constituency, I think it's potentially a tax against aspiration. And I've often thought of the people who are sometimes in these rather expensive houses now, a lot of them are asset rich, cash poor, and may have actually acquired the house some time ago. So the last thing, dare I say it, I want to see are widows being turfed out of their houses for the sake of some cash flow. The Centre for Policy Studies this week published a creed occur for mega wealthy property owners. At 4.2% of GDP, the UK already brings in the most from properties of any OECD country. The OECD average is a smaller 1.8%. The think tank also offered research showing that the top 1.6% of property sales yielded 26% of all stamp duty. And the top 0.7% of homes contributes 36% of inheritance tax. 
Whatever the numbers, the Lib Dems are at home on this agenda. And for the other parties, the central John Stuart Mill insight that wealth, not income, should be taxed is broadly compelling. I would prefer to look at something that they have in some parts of Australia, which is a land tax that exempts people's homes, main homes, and exempts farmland, but it basically bears down on people who have second homes and also on property companies um, and who are sitting on large land banks. And I think that that's probably a better form of wealth tax. It's fairer. It doesn't run into this little old lady in a big house problem. Um, and I think we should then use the proceeds to cut taxes um, on, on people on average earnings. Are you trying to write George Osborne's budget for him? Uh, not at all. He's writing it, but there's... Uh... Today, a letter resurfaced, written by the business secretary at the beginning of February, in which he accuses the Prime Minister and indeed his own boss, Nick Clegg, of presiding over a government with no vision beyond sorting out the fiscal mess. Until his departure recently, Chris Hume was the economic dissident within the Cabinet, the thorn in their side, and now Vince Cable seems to have taken up the mantle. What he's saying is, two weeks out from a budget, if it isn't radical, it isn't the Lib Dems' fault. But there will be many who say that a business secretary who criticises a lack of economic strategy is surely criticising his own brief. It's highly unlikely that this budget includes a mansion tax, whatever the Lib Dem negotiating position. But there is probably going to be action to clamp down on its extravagantly lavish cousin, the people who set up companies to pay much reduced council tax on their properties. If the government changed the loopholes such that people who are putting flats into companies, they can't do that anymore, would that be a mansion tax? No, it's not, because that's just avoiding a loophole or getting rid of a loophole. People shouldn't be doing that anyway. Uh, so we want to do that. But a mansion tax is a, a new source of revenue. It learn more uh, than closing the loophole because it applies to all houses every year above £2 million. So it would be, it would be an and, not an or. In three days' time, the Lib Dems convene on Newcastle for their conference, a rowdy and probably quite glum affair. Cable reminding them he's pushing for John Stuart Mill's wealth tax may put some spring in a sandal-shod step. Well, joining us now to give us their thoughts on a mansion tax are the Conservative MP Jacob Rees-Mogg, the property expert Kirsty Alsop, and Tim Montgomery, the editor of the Tory grassroots website Conservative Home. If someone is lucky enough to own a house that's worth two and a half million pounds, they can surely afford five thousand pounds a year, can't they? Well, they already pay the council tax, and the problem with taxes on capital is that people don't necessarily have any cash flow with which to pay the tax bill. Well, you then get a smaller house. Well, say so you want to kick the widow out of her house, and you do find in the southeast of England people who've lived in their homes for 40 years who find their home is very valuable, but they're living on relatively small fixed incomes. And is that how you want society to run? Uh, Tim Montgomery, is that how you want society to run? I think where I come from in this debate is we are facing probably one of the worst economic circumstances this country has faced for a long time. People on low and average incomes out there are struggling to make ends meet. They're running out of income at the start of the month, not at the end of the month. People for the first time are looking to be less well off than the generation that preceded them. What I want from a Conservative-led government is to do everything it possibly can to help those families. Now the stories that Jacob has shared with us are tough. Some people will find these sorts of taxes difficult. But I want when George Osborne gets up to deliver the budget, I don't want him to just do things that are marginal for families on council tax or pension duty. I want him to have cut spending more deeply. I want him to have all the wiggle room in the budget and to introduce some wealth taxes so that he can make a sizable right. difference for the families we really need to help. Uh, Kirsty, also, you, you, I mean, you spend your entire life in the, uh, in the property world. Uh, where are you, Aberdeen? I'm in Aberdeen, yeah, yeah, okay. yes. uh, in, in Aberdeen up, uh, and elsewhere. Um, yes. What effect would it have, this sort of tax, do you think? I don't think it would have a major effect. It's a, uh, if, it, you know, at, at the point that they set it, so let's say it's two million, there'll be some fanning around in that area. But it's not so much that. It's that they've got to decide whether they want to tax assets or whether they want to... to um, uh, tax income and uh, Jacob is, is completely right it, it's very patronising to talk about this old widow thing both my parents and my parents-in-law will be hugely affected 
by an annual mansion tax. If we want to have a sales tax, let's be honest about it and say we should pay tax when we go into a purchase, which we do in stamp duty, and we should pay tax when we come out of a purchase and in, a, in an honest sales tax, which they do in countries all over the world and which has been something that's been slightly inevitable for a long time. Are you also going to defend all these uh, foreign people who come to Britain and buy property without paying uh, stamp duty? No. Why on earth would I defend them? Well, no, I... we, have, we have stamp duty in this country. We should all pay it. And when we um, sell a property, the, you know, Tim's right. There are people suffering and they're not people who own two million pound properties. But there are a great many people, particularly in the southeast, who own very valuable homes like my in-laws, who have lived in the same house for 50 years and would be simply incapable of paying an annual tax on the value of an asset they've had that length of time. Now, what about Kirsty Allsop's in-laws? Well, of course, they may not have the income themselves, but they are sat on an asset which has appreciated beyond it's all reasonable expectations. It's a home. It is a home, but it is also an asset for which you know other people will benefit perhaps through inheritance later later years. No, we there have are an plenty of tax. there are plenty of financial companies who will help your relatives, the Jacob's widow, realise their asset now, and they will still be able to live in that house, but they'll be able to extract some of the no, income now Tim, so that they can make a contribution to the Exchequer what? to help the mass of people who are suffering on a, on no, a significant scale. People make a, 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 they pay the Exchequer when they buy and they pay when they die. But you cannot expect people who don't have an income to make an annual payment if they simply don't. What about people who are paying an 80% mortgage? You can have someone in a £2 million house who has it free gratis and another person who's in a £2 million house who's working to pay a mortgage on that. What I, what I want the Conservative Party, the Conservative-led government to be, is the party that is on, on the side of the people who can't fill up their petrol tank at the moment, the people who are struggling to meet the very, uh, their electricity bills. A party that worries too much about people with £2 million homes is not a party that is ever going to win a majority in this country. Jacob rees -Mogg. The high priest of conservatism suddenly has gone socialist on us, which is rather concerning, because Tim is really in that position through conservative home. What, 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 what he's arguing <laughs> for... Really, what, he's being compassionate, no, no, isn't he? No, he's no, worrying no, he's about not. people who have more he's urgent saying, needs than what they, no. what they do with their £2.5 million pound house. What, what he's saying is that penal taxes will help the less well-off. They won't. What penal taxes will do will mean that people will leave the country, people will stop working, people will move house to smaller houses. That well, if, you, if you have such a penal tax system in this country, bear in mind the top 1% of taxpayers already pay 27% of the total income tax. We have the figures from the CPS on how much comes from property taxes, death duties on the most expensive houses. The idea that there is more to be squeezed out of top earners without risking the tax base is, I think, simply mistaken. But, of course, I think one of the reasons why, apart from the politics of it, that as an economist I also support taxing wealth more than income, is you can't evade your a property in a way that we are losing people because we're taxing income at, say, 50% for high earners. People are going overseas because it's easier to move their income to foreign banks. I Actually, think, property, I, I, many people in London from overseas who are evading stamp duty, who are uh, r Russian uh, from the Middle East, they are not making no, no. a contribution. And uh, what we need is a crackdown on people like that so that we can afford to cut That's a the 50p. Yeah, exactly. it is all everyone everyone agrees all, the, all these it is all part of this and, and avoid tax should but, pay it. But, but, but the, it is all point, part of the, the same the, package of, producer, of being a, a party, of being a government that could afford What tax happens to cuts. a society when you start taxing wealth instead of taxing earnings? Well, if you tax earnings too much, as I was sort of saying to Jacob, people start to move abroad because they can take their jobs abroad. If you tax property, that is much harder to evade. And so you actually get a system whereby well, you are taxing not wealth that, creation, that, that, which is what we are doing at the moment. We are taxing I, wealth I don't creation think that, I don't think that's rather right, than wealth. Actually. I think wealth taxes are remarkably easy to evade. They've got a lot of wealth taxes in places like Italy, which are renowned for their high levels of tax avoidance and evasion. And if you look at stamp in duty, Italy, they avoid which is all tax. Okay. <laughs> Kirsty, you've been trying to get in up mm. Aberdeen there. Go on. I, I'm, I'm just really saying the same thing over and over again. Tax well, when you sell. Transact. 
have a transaction tax, but it's unworkable. As you said at the beginning of the show, Jeremy, we can't do it. We all know we can't do it. It, it will cause the most appalling problems. Yeah. There will be numerous lawsuits, administration. I mean, I Vince Cable's known for ages that the mansion see, tax in its original form is unworkable. Well, so let's all be honest and say is, we need you, to you raise more money. Well, Tim, this is Vince Cable playing games for the benefit of his party, which is shortly all to gather together, and, they, and he, they want to see St. Vince's keeping the flame alive. That's all. <laughs> David Cameron's never going to go for this, is he? Well, pr I fear not, actually. I make the argument that a Conservative party that is interested in the striving classes should, and Vince Cable may be playing politics with this. But it is completely workable. I don't favour the precise mansion tax mechanism that Vince Cable has proposed. I think you would have a few higher bans on council tax. It's ridiculous that at the moment someone on a two million pound house pays the same as someone on a three hundred thousand pound tax. Yeah, of perfectly course. Workable, agrees there is that. perfectly workable ways of introducing more fairer property taxes. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed. Thanks a lot. Accumulating and blowing around. It's all changed though as we go towards Thursday. It turns milder again across northern areas. Milder, cloudier with some outbreaks of rain, particularly for Western Scotland and Northern Ireland. Further south, Thursday it looks like drying up with uh, some sunshine after a frosty start, temperatures slowly recovering. And the trend as we hit the end of the week is for southern areas to settle down with high pressure setting in. I'm not promising too much in the way of sunshine, mind you, as you can see. Further north, uh, there will be the threat of further rain, particularly to the far northwest of Scotland. Much more detail online.